Hello, friends and family, and welcome to the Global Pandemic Crippling Anxiety Meditation Hour that lasts 10 minutes. And uh, we'll go over the ground rules as usual. This is not meditation instruction, and I am not a meditation teacher. Um, today's topic, I, I wanted to cover um, in the form of a story uh, I'm not sure if it's an old Indian parable or if it is um, a modern construction, uh, but it has <clears throat> that sort of structure of a fable. It's very short. Uh, the story goes that there is an old man in a village and he goes to the park and is planting saplings. And a younger man comes up to him and says, old man, why are you bothering to plant these saplings? You're not going to live to see them grow into full trees. And the old man smiles and turns to him and says, son, these trees are for God. Now, I think like so many things, this, this story rings true, but has this hint of banality that, well, of course, we should be concerned about the things which persist beyond our own lives. But it's very difficult for us to translate that intellectual understanding. Intellectually, we understand this world will persist beyond us and we should take care of it and we should take care of the people in it other than ourselves. But our intuition, our sense of self, often, if not always, leads us to feel that somehow individually we are special and that our perspective is somehow special and that when we die, assuming this life is all there is, that because our perception began at birth and will presumably end at death, that for consciousness, for our own consciousness, there will be nothing beyond our own life. And so what does it matter anyway? Um, and again, this isn't an intellectual perspective. Intellectually, we all know that we should be taking care of our surroundings, of our planet, of our fellow humans, if not fellow creatures. But it's difficult to reconcile these two. It's difficult to say, okay, I know that the world beyond me is very important and I need to work to serve that world in some capacity. And to transform that intellectual understanding into an inherent understanding, an intuitive understanding that this is how the world is, that I'm not that special I may be special, but I'm not so special that I should dispose of everything, hoard goods, hoard wealth, um, because come my death, nothing else matters. And I spoke in a recent video about this idea of magnification um, you can call it any number of things. It Visually, we were talking about narrowing. So narrowing our attention from the room around us to this space under the nostrils. But in terms of what's happening to our perception, to our awareness, we are zooming. So we're taking this tiny space and we're zooming it zooming into it or zooming it out so that it fills 
100% of our awareness or more and more of our awareness. And it's an interesting consequence of meditation that as we do this, as we fill our awareness with a narrower and narrower space and we look at narrower and narrower, subtler and subtler realities within that space, it's, it's this strange consequence that this riddle of the old man is, is somewhat resolved piece by piece in tiny increments you won't uh you won't find or at least i haven't found that in my early years of meditation that i've come to some great all-encompassing epiphany my every behavior most certainly is not um, selfless and serving others but i have found that this magnification of the small which is essentially what a focused meditation is does help me intuitively understand those aspects of life that not only should i think about how my actions influence the world during my life and beyond my life after I die. But I can begin to intuit and I can begin to feel how those actions will affect the world beyond the time of my death. And it also naturally seems to occur that a person wants more and more to commit to those actions which have a positive influence on our environment. We want to help our fellow citizens. We want to share with our family more. We want to engage in the right actions. And that seems worthwhile to me. Um, worthwhile uh, and um, worth committing to a daily practice of meditation if this consequence is um, is there is inherent in the meditation and again returning to the idea of maintaining skepticism uh, you should Hold on to this idea if you can, but explore it for yourself. See if meditation is helping you in this way. Um, if your meditation is 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the evening every day, um, don't expect huge changes. Um, but a, a, good, a good clean room experiment is a silent meditation retreat. If you take 10 days and you meditate under instruction uh, of a qualified teacher, you'll come out on the 11th day and observe how your perception of the world has changed. Um, and undoubtedly, it won't be a small shift after 10 days of meditation. Um, but for now, our practice of uh, 10 minutes and 10 minutes every day is uh, a small shift, but it's a shift worth making. I realize that my, uh, <laughs> my timer is not here. So today I would encourage you to take 10 minutes uh, on your own Use any kind of timer you like. I recommend uh, a bell or a gong or something that isn't too jarring. Uh, don't um, jostle yourself out of your 10 minutes of meditation. Um, and uh, if you want my help um, installing a 10 minute guided meditation on your phone, I'm happy to help with that. 
I hope everyone is staying healthy and staying safe, and we will see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.